गुलसिरिया खंडी भगवान की जय परम गुरु श्री महेंद्र महाराज की जय अतल क्षेत्र शिहेरा खान विश्वाधाम की जय काशी के पुराधिनाथ श्रीकाल भैरव की जय चरम्बे मात की जय हेरा खंडे श्री मात की जय बजरंग बली की जय सनातन धर्म Babaji had materialized his body in a cave in a place called Herakon. And this was actually witnessed by some Indian people who saw a ball of light appear. I was not there at that time. But then what happened is Babaji climbed the top of this big mountain, Mount Kailash, and he sat up there for 45 days and 45 nights without eating, without drinking, without sleeping, and he kept his eyes closed and he was just like this. Because if he opened his eyes, then people would just pass out. They couldn't handle the energy. So I actually met people who were there at that time, and they said they would have constant visions. They would see their past lives, they would see their future, and it was really intense. Well, we were called after that. Western devotees around 1977. So he appeared in 1970, and there was a lot of Indian people that came to him, and then some Italians came to him, and the Americans were called around 1977. And the way we were called is amazing. I was working in the office of the first rebirthing center in San Francisco, and I opened all the mail. And one day, I got this very strange letter. It was, I cannot even really describe the paper was unusual of the, uh, of the envelope. And it said, Leonard Orr, who's the founder of Rebirthing, 301 Lime Street, San Francisco. But there was no return address. And it was stamped from India with no town. And I opened this envelope, and it was the strangest feeling. I can never tell you. This paper was very unusual, and it printed in pencil. It said, come to India. No signature. So I said, oh, Leonard, we've been called, you know? And I knew some guru was calling us, but I didn't know who it was. So Leonard got all excited. We immediately decided to go to India. About 12 of us who were new rebirthers wanted to go. But I had no money. I had just left my nursing career. So I borrowed the money. <laughs> and it's the only time I've ever borrowed money and I paid it all back. It was the best investment I ever made. So we went to India and Leonard had this brilliant idea in New Delhi when we were there. We, we, well, we went to Bombay first, sorry, because we had a big sun city. And Leonard said, Let's all spread out and go to different parts of India and look for this guru. And we'll come back in two weeks in New Delhi and compare notes. So I said, okay, I volunteer to go south. I'll visit Rajneesh because I liked his book, The Mustard Seed. So I took a train to the south. One girl went to the north. He went all different directions. Okay, so anyway, in two weeks we went back to um, New Delhi and met. Now, one girl was missing. She didn't show up. And basically, it's impossible to find a missing person in India. So we didn't know where she was. She had gone north, and we couldn't find her. Leonard had met a guru named Abu, and he was very powerful, and we uh, met him. And he had a lot of powers. He could speak to animals, and they would respond to him. And, he could heal snake bites on the telephone, and he had a lot of magical power, so it was very tempting to think maybe he was the one. And anyway, um, he and Leonard got in a big argument about physical immortality. So anyway, then we went home, because our visas were up, and this girl was still not found. And lo and behold, seven months later, she walked in the rebirthing office, and I looked at her and I said, where have you been? She said, I found the real Babaji. And I went, what? And then I said something really stupid. 
I said, well, how tall is he? You know, because I'm so tall, I don't know. It just, you know, I used to worry about being really tall, and so it just came out of me. And guess what she said? She said, which day? So obviously, she was telling me he changed size. And I said, Leonard, we have to go back right now. So we packed her bags, and we all went back to India in search for Babaji. But we didn't have, you know, a real address because he was roaming the foothills of the Himalayas in Upper Pradesh, India. So we stopped in Bombay to meet the guru, Abu, that Leonard had met. And he wanted me to stay with him. He said, Sandra, you stay with me. And Leonard said, no, you come with me. And I was really confused. I didn't know, you know, what to do. And I was afraid I'd choose the wrong master. And uh, then Leonard said, well, get your head together and meet me three days. I to, in, in three days, I have to go alone. So there I was in New Delhi all by myself, trying to figure out if I should stay with this guru Abu or if I should go with Leonard. And my mind was like molasses. Nothing was moving, and I was really stuck, and I just couldn't decide anything. And at the end of the third day, I went outside, and I started screaming, God, I demand to know my true spiritual path. And not only that, I demand to know it tonight, because the time was up, right? And so that night, I had a dream, and I heard the music, the uh, what we call the RT, which is the sacred music that we play at Babaji's ashram. I didn't see him. But I recognized this music somehow. I said, this is it. So I grabbed an Indian bus, and I <laughs> it was full. And I had to sit on these tires. And there was a woman in front of me with a pig. And it was really crazy. I mean, it, I guess it was kind of a test to see if I would flinch or not. But eight-hour trip, you know, about three-fourths of the way there, I felt my heart being ripped open by Babaji. I hadn't seen him yet or anything. It was just so much love. So Leonard had said, go to this town called Haldwani and find this saint named Muniraj. I had no address, and I thought it was going to be a little village, you know, a hamlet or something, where I could just walk around and everybody would know. So I kept, it was a bustling city. So I, I actually uh, was shocked because I didn't have any address. Another test I had to go through. So what happened was I asked people, do you know Muni Raj? Do you know Muni Raj? Everybody said no. Four hours. Finally, at the end of the fourth hour, some man said to me, well, I, I think he has a different name here. His name is Trilak Singh. He's right down here in this feed store. And I thought, well, how strange. The saint would be in a feed store. Anyway, I followed his instruction. I went down this little alley and I knocked on the door. And this moment changed my life. Muniraj opened the door, and he was Babaji's main devotee, a tall saint, and he was wearing white, and he was glowing. And I thought, this is the most peaceful being I've ever met in my whole life. 